Hi everyone, and welcome to my Pod Opinion Cast. Yeah, we're gonna get this. Today on the menu, Bruce Lee. My name is Gary Harrison. Subscribe. Yeah. Dragon, keep moving. Let's get into this. Defeat is a state of mind. No one is ever defeated until defeat has been accepted as a reality. Knowing is not enough. We must apply. Willing is not enough. We must do. These are the words from one of the great philosophers and martial artists of the world. Li Yunfan, or how we come to know him, Bruce Lee. The difference one person can make is the difference you can make to a person. Bruce said, I think of myself as a human being. He was just one step ahead of everybody. That's what a lot of his friends says. A world-class martial artist. Never waste energy on worries or negative thoughts. All problems are brought into existence. Drop them. Adapt what is useful and reject what is useless. Now... How does he mean that? Overcoming the enemy. You know, Bruce had to face a lot of rejection and discrimination because of his Asian roots and also because he was a quarter Caucasian. When you think about the different crimes that have been taking place in America against Asians, what would it be like if they bump into someone like a Bruce Lee. His last public foray was Enter the Dragon. I consider it his magnum opus. It was a seminal moment in his life. Considering the steps that it took Bruce to get there, which was quite a feat, but He was elated, to say the least. He never lived to see the ramifications of his his efforts in this great motion picture. A wise man can learn from a foolish question, then a fool can learn from a wise answer. Now, when I was seven, my mom took me and my younger brother to see Enter the Dragon. We didn't know what we were going to expect. I don't even think I remember what the film's title was, but once it came on, and that opening scene, where he dynamically pulverized his opponent, the way how we did it with such finesse, we were all impressed. We knew that we were in for a treat. There was nothing like that at the time when we saw it, and it made us very interested in the martial arts. There was something about his charisma and his prowess. This was different than just somebody fighting someone or just punching someone. It was like ballet, art. I can't explain it. You would have to see it to understand it. The first time you saw something like that, you was completely blown away. To demystify it, you would have to watch it numerous of times and try to scrutinize the movements, the physique, the charisma. But we all know that it stems from somewhere. 
I did understand as I began to mature that there was a philosophy behind the martial arts and it was not only about fighting your opponent it was also about out masterminding your opponent overcoming the enemies yourself that's basically saying get out of your own way I think that's something Bruce did very well he, he got out of his own way and went for what he wanted in life upon the different stages that got him to the point where he would become a major superstar legend. He had to go through different phases. He had to prove himself. He even had to go against his own kind, although he was a mixed man. Sharing martial arts with diverse groups in America that was a no-no and uh, he proved himself and then going from there to landing his first series in America fantastic the Green Hornet Cato that role he played brilliant so you see, you can get out your own way. He did that and saw everything into fruition. But it was a hard road, but he stuck to his guns. In this case, it was mind over matter. And Bruce always knew what he wanted. And he just kept on persevering. You know, those old movies that he did before Enter the Dragon. The Boss, Chinese Connection, The Way of the Dragon. They all were brilliant in their own right. You know, and we can sit around and say, what would have been or what could have been? Bruce lived to the fullest in my opinion because all what he left us to dissect and to probe it's a body of work that I don't know what he would have done more if he were to be here sure we would selfishly like him to be here but in my opinion his spirit never left the earth I mean he became the patron saint of the martial arts I mean, it just exuded whenever you saw him on screen. And still, years upon years after looking at those movies, you just feel his spirit. If you always put limit on everything you do, physical or anything else, it will spread into your work and into your life. There are no limits. There are only plateaus, and you must not stay there. You must go beyond them. A lot of his philosophies still stick with us to this day. Especially the be what of my friend quote. A lot of people resonated with that one. And we all are one under the sun. We are just different people. That's all. One of his friends, Bob Wall, said, who appeared with him in Enter the Dragon and The Way of the Dragon, he said women looked at him and said, what a great looking man. It didn't enter their mind that he was Chinese or Jewish or Italian or Irish or African American, whatever. It entered their mind that he was brilliant, great looking, appealing, a charming man with the devil in him. He was a confident, cocky, lovable kind of dynamic human Bob Wall to know oneself is to study oneself in action with another person he goes on to say I am learning to understand rather than immediately judge or to be judged 
I cannot blindly follow the crowd and accept their approach. I will not allow myself to indulge in the usual manipulating game of role creation. So in other words, Bruce is saying, I'm not a sycophant. I will develop my own thing. I will not flock with the seagulls. I'll find my own box and create my own. I've often had this discussion. Finding your own, there's nothing wrong with developing your own. Not everybody has to be on board or on the same page. But there is nothing wrong with developing your own thing. It's like what Bruce did to develop his style. He didn't get locked down into one sort of martial arts. He developed a system that worked for him, rejected it, and kept it moving. At the end of the day, this is a family man. Or was a family man. Who loved his family. Who was there as much as he could. Who had a great support system from his wife, Linda. And evolved into a cultural icon. A very important cultural icon. And it's important to stress that Bruce was an actor who fell in love with the martial arts. He was an actor before, but fell in love with the martial arts. So let's make that clear. He was an actual, real, competent street fighter as well. It was not just for show. Movies is one thing, but reality is another thing. This was a real martial artist. With all that being said, I'm very happy that someone like Bruce Lee, who was born in America, was able to come back from Hong Kong to expound upon his gifts and share and become a cultural icon in America. Although he's faced some hard roads, he didn't have any malice, he kept going and became the cultural icon which he had become. That being said, I say stop the hate against American Asians. I made this podcast especially so everyone can see with pride an American Asian who had done well because he kept going, kept it moving, respecting other groups. So, let's wake up and stop the hate crimes against Asian Americans. That being said, stay humble and stay hungry. I thank you for watching and listening. My name is Gary Harrison, and I'll catch you on the next one.